Hey, hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to episode 34 of the vlog. This is a session I played right before Christmas. It was my last session of 2021. Um, for those of you who have been following the channel, you know that October was not an especially good month for me. Um, I took some shots at 2.5 in November, and those didn't really go very well either. And December wasn't really off to a great start. So I figured this might be the last chance I get to play for the year. And I really wanted to put together a good session. And I got lucky because in this vlog, you're going to see aces, kings, and queens twice. So I have a chance to rebound and end the year strong. As always, if you enjoy, please like and subscribe. Let's get to it. Strap in, ladies and gentlemen, because this one's going to get off the rails quick. We are under the gun, and we look down at pocket nines. I'm going to open the action for $10. I get a call from plus one, but everybody else folds. We're off to the flop heads up. The flop is six, seven, ten rainbow, so I flop myself a gut shot. I put out a C-bet for $15, and plus one bumps it up to $35. I'll call one street to try to hit my straight. I call. We're off to the turn. The turn is a five of hearts, so I don't get there. I slow down and check. My opponent looks kind of flustered, and he ends up flipping over his hand. He's got pocket sixes for middle set. I guess he thought that was the river, maybe? I don't know. Whatever it was, I'm not putting any more money in the pot, so the dealer puts out the river. It's a three of hearts. An obvious check here. He just checks back, and he collects his chips. Once again, we're under the gun, and we look down at ace-queen offsuit. I open the action for $12. Hey, guys, somebody's got to get the knit the action. I've seen your vlogs. Folds all the way around to the button who makes the call, and the small blind calls as well. We're off to a flop three ways. The flop is king 10 3 all club. So I flop myself a gut shot and the nut flush draw here. I put out a C bet of $20. $20 net bet. The button makes the call, but the small blind folds. We're off to the turn. Turn is a queen. My opponent looks like he's assembling a bet. Maybe you look like you want to fire off on that card. Nah. That's what it looked like. Let's fire, my friend. Okay. 70. So instead, I decide to beat him to it, and I bet out $70. After some thinking, he makes the call, so we're off to the river. The river is a two, shouldn't change anything. Once again, he starts to grab his stack, so maybe I'm up against some sort of middle flush or something. I am holding the blocker to the nut flush here. If he has it, he has it. I ship it. After some thinking, he reluctantly folds. Under the gun, once again, we look down at King Jack offsuit. I open the action for $15. I get calls from plus one, plus two, and the small blind, so we're off to a flop four ways. The flop is four, five, Jack with two diamonds. When it checks to me, I lead out for $40. Plus one makes the fold, but then plus two jams for $200 total. It folds back to me, and what can he have here? Could he have fours or fives for a set? Sure. What do I think he doesn't have? Queens plus. I wasn't three bet preflop, so there's no real reason to believe it's any one of those hands. Ace jack? Maybe, but if so, it just kind of might be a cooler here. After tanking for a full two minutes, running over all of my options, I decide to go ahead and make the call. We're off to a run out. The turn is an eight of clubs, and the river is a six of spades. My opponent flips over pocket queens. Just unbelievable. I can't believe he didn't three bet preflop, but by doing that, he got the maximum out of me, so nice answer. Two hands later, we're in the small blind and we look down at ace three of clubs. There are two early position callers before it folds around to the cutoff who calls as well. John, who's a vlog watcher on the button, then bumps it up to $10. I make the call and it folds all the way around to the hijack who also calls. We're off to a flop three ways. The flop is ace three six, so I flop two pair here. I check and it checks all the way around to the hijack who bets out $25. John on the button makes the call. The action's back on me, and I decided to go ahead and put the raise in. I raised to $90. The hijack folds and it's back on John on the button who thinks for almost a solid minute. I think that he thinks I'm steaming from two hands ago, and that's exactly what I want him to think. I'm trying to make him think that I'm on tilt. So after thinking for about a solid minute, he ends up jamming for 130 total. I snap it off. Here's the run out. So as you can see, a backdoor flush gets there. I show my hand, and my hand is good. He said he had kings, and it's just kind of a lucky spot where I look like I might be tilting, and I'm able to get paid off to the maximum. I wanted to take a moment to give a shout out to Bernardo here, a new player that I ran into at the 1-2 table. Sir, 
You gonna check out my channel? Yes. Yeah, Bernardo is running white hot right now. It's about $800 in front of a one-two table. So this is the guy I'm gonna stay away from tonight. Can I send a salutation for yeah, my friend? Yeah, absolutely, man. Saludos a mi amigo Francisco aquí que estamos hablando. Te diré los resultados. Awesome. Nice to meet you, man. You too, buddy. We're on the button this time. We looked at a King 10 offsuit. There's a call from under the gun before it folds all the way around to me, and I bump it up to $12. The small blind then three bets me to $30. Under the gun ends up making the call, and I call as well. We're off to a flop three ways. The flop is king, deuce, deuce with two diamonds, so I've got top pair here. It checks to me, and I put out a bet of $65. The small blind folds, and it's back on under the gun, who then jams for $108 total. Nothing I can really do here except call, so I do. We're off to a run out. The turn is a three of clubs, and the river is a jack of hearts. Under the gun then flips over ace-10, and we win this one. Just kind of baffling. Obviously, I'm not folding on that flop bet for 50 more dollars. John comes back and asks what happened, and I have to admit, I'm not really sure. Oh, what happened there? Ace, deuce. If it's suited, I call. Sure. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know what I mean? There's a button straddle. We're under the gun, once again with pocket nines. There's a call from the small blind before the big blind bumps it up to $15. I make the call and it folds all the way around to the small blind who also calls. We're off to a flop three ways. The flop is 10-5-5 rainbow, so not a bad flop at all. The big blind continues on for $25. It's a good flop for me, so I make the call. The small blind folds. We're off to the turn. The turn is a 10 of diamonds, so it double pairs the board. The big blind then slows down and checks to me, so I bet out $60. The big blind doesn't look happy and he ends up folding. You guys like pocket nines? Good, because we're in the small blind and we have them again. Under the gun makes the call and it folds all the way around to the button who calls as well. The action's on me and I bump it up to $14. The big blind makes the call, under the gun calls, and the button calls, so we're off to a flop four ways. The flop is do six eight rainbow, another great flop for nines. On such a connected board though, I wanna go ahead and protect my hand, so I bet out for $60. I wanna make sure anybody continuing on a draw pays for it. The big blind, who's called every bet I've made, surprisingly folds. Under the gun folds and it's on the button. He puts in some thought, but then he ends up folding. An absolute maniac sits down on the seat to my right. This guy is involved in every hand. And you know what? He's now my new target. We're in the cutoff when we look down at queen seven of hearts. There are two callers from middle position. When the action gets to me, I decide to limp here. You know, it seems like bad things are always happening to me. Like I have bad luck or something. Son, you don't have bad luck. The reason that bad things happen to you is because you're a dumbass. That's a terrible move. It folds to the big blind who checks his option. We're off to the flop. The flop is queen 10 three with two diamonds. So I've got top pair here, but I've got kicker problems. It checks the middle position who bets $15. I'm the only caller, so we're off to the turn heads up. The turn is a 10 of spades, not a terrible card. It checks to me and I decide to go ahead and continue on and I bet $30. My opponent makes the call, so we're off to the river. The river is a blank. My opponent checks it over to me and I decide to go ahead and just check this one back and my opponent rolls over 10-4 for trips. This is why you don't play limped pots. There's a button straddle, we're in plus two when we look down at ace jack off suit. It folds around to the maniac in plus one who bumps it up to $35. This guy has been hyper aggressive since he sat down and he's already down two buy-ins. So I'm kind of wondering if he's steaming with this raise. After 21 seconds of thinking, he comments. How's it going, bro? Thanks, man, I'm thinking. Okay. I'm trying to figure out if I want to jam and isolate this guy and make him risk it all. I eventually end up just calling, and it folds around to the button, who then jams for over $200. This is what I was thinking about for that entire 21 seconds. Should I raise, or should I call? And if I do call, what happens when there's a raise? However, I'm kind of glad I just went with the call. Plus one ends up folding, and I can't call this, so I fold as well. We're in the big blind this time, we look down at pocket queens. There's a call from early position. When the action gets to the button, he bumps it up to $12. The maniac in the small blind calls. When the action's on me, I then three bet to $55. The early position player folds, but the button in the small blind calls. So we're off to a flop three ways. 
The flop is king seven three rainbow, so it's not a great flop here, but the action actually checks all the way through, so any safe turn card, I think I can barrel here. The turn is an ace of spades. This board's getting worse, but once again, the action checks through, so we're off to the river. The river is a four of spades and brings in the back door flush. It's just awful. Once again, though, the action checks through. The button flips over pocket tens. I show my hand and the small blind shows king jack to take it all. We're on the button this time and we look down at pocket sevens. There is a call from plus one before it folds to the hijack who then raises to $10. Then the cutoff re-raises to $17. I decide to go ahead and make the call and it folds to the big blind who then re-raises to $37. Plus one and the hijack both make the fold, but for such a small raise, the cutoff's gonna call and I'm gonna call. We're off to the flop multi-way. The flop is king three eight, so not a great flop for me, but the action checks through, so we're off to the turn. The turn is a jack of diamonds, and on this card, the big blind leads for $60. Neither one of us really has anything, so we both fold, and the big blind ends up showing pocket aces. Just kind of weird to see such a small bet with aces. At this point, my stack has gone down from about $600 down to about $425, and I may just end up going broke tonight. The maniac has moved over to C8, so he's going to have position on me in most hands, but that's fine. I'll let him hang himself. It's the maniac's big blind. We're in the cutoff, and we look down at ace 10 of diamonds. There are three callers before the action gets to me, and I bump it up to $20. The button makes the call, but everybody else folds. The button is not who I wanted to battle in this hand, but we're off to a flop. The flop is 489 with two diamonds, so I flop the nut flush draw here. I check, and the button checks behind, so we're off to the turn. The turn is a nine, so it pairs the board. I check to see what the button's gonna do, but once again, he checks behind, so we're off to the river. The river is a five of diamonds, so I've made my flush. There's not a whole lot of money in this pot, but I put out about a half pot size bet of $20. My opponent shows me king two of clubs and he ends up making the fold. This pretty much confirms I can't leave the game. Not if they're gonna call pre-flop raises with hands like that. I got a visit from a vlog watcher, Josh. Says the content's getting better. Good to see you, man. This is the hand I've been waiting for. We're on the button and we look down at pocket aces. There are two callers before the action gets to me. And when it does, I bump it up to $15. The small blind, who I've been battling with all day, then three bets me to $35. Why? I don't know why. The running gag is he calls every raise that I make. Under the gun makes the call as well, and the hijack folds. When it's back on me, I act like I'm frustrated, but obviously this is a dream situation. I'm getting sick of this shit. Push me off how many times though? I pushed you off? You definitely pushed me off. I'm gonna raise. I put in the very angry, tilted looking four bet to $145. The small blind says he's sick of me and he jams for 243 effective. You don't raise, I'm gonna go all in. You're not pushing me off. Under the gun folds, I snap it off. We decide to flip our hands. My opponent has pocket kings. The ideal situation here. Just got to fade two outs. We figure everything out. All right, here we go. Yeah, I'm dead. Yeah, I'm dead. Yeah, I'm dead. Yep, he hit a set on the flop. He boated on the turn, and I didn't hit on the river. Yeah. The maniac in seat eight took a break and he's back and he's been much more disciplined since he sat back down. So now I'm thinking the well may have dried up. We're in plus one and we look down at 10 jack off suit. I open the action for $10. The subdued maniac on the button then bumps it up to $25. It falls to the small blind who makes the call. The action's on me and I can't call here because of my stack size. So I jam instead for $118 total. The maniac says he wants a count, but he ends up folding. It's back on the big blind, and he doesn't think too long before discarding his hand. We're on the button with another premium, Pocket Kings. It folds to plus two, who bumps it up to $10. The hijack makes the call, and when the action's on me, I put in the three bet, and I think my size might be a little bit bad here. I only three bet to $30. I'm trying to get some action because I'm short stacked, but I think you have to protect your hand a little bit more. Both players end up making the call. We're off to the flop three ways. The flop is ace jack eight with two clubs, so just a nightmare flop here. But the action's gonna check through, so we're off to the turn. 
The turn is a six of spades, and on this card, plus two leads out for $35. When the action's on the hijack, he then puts in the raise to $80. The action's on me, and it's just been that kind of night. I have to make the fold here. Plus two calls, so we'll get to see a run out. The river is a nine of clubs. They end up getting it all in, about a $550 pot. Plus two shows ace jack for a flop two pair. The hijack shows queen ten of clubs for the rivered flush. Yep, that kind of night. In the last hand of the night, there's an under the gun straddle. We're in middle position with king jack of spades. The action folds to me and I raise to $20. There's one caller from late position before the button raises to $60. He could be doing this to take down the dead money and he's totally capable of making a play like that. So when the action's back on me, I jam. The late position player folds, but he makes the call, so we're going to see a run out. So as you can see, we don't improve at all on the run out. My opponent flips over pocket aces. Just kind of how this night was supposed to end. And not really knowing what to do, I decide to go ahead and pack it up and call it a night. Yeah, so not quite the finish I was looking for. I won't lie. When I recorded the original outro, I went on this rant about how I didn't think my channel was going to survive and I needed to refocus my attention to other things. I actually didn't play live poker for the rest of the year. I actually didn't play live poker for about a month. I'll have another episode coming up for you here, which is my first live session of the year. That would be out in the next couple weeks or so. Again, if you enjoy, like, subscribe. See you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel for more poker content. And you can follow me on Instagram at 7cardflushpoker.